Hey there, welcome to the 412 Canada podcast. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kim Hutchins. At 412, we're equipping the church for greater influence through serving. 412 is a ministry of Faith Baptist Church in Huntsville, Ontario. We're so excited to be able to continue to equip you through our podcast and YouTube. And today I'm excited to bring you Brooke Nichols. Brooke is a worship leader and songwriter from Toronto, Ontario, where she serves as a worship leader at Sanctus Church. When she's not at her home church, she's leading worship at different churches and ministries across Canada and beyond. Brooke has been named the Female Vocalist of the Year for the last three years at the Canadian Gospel Music Awards, and her album Pursue was nominated for a 2020 Juno Award. Brooke is married to her guitar player, Steve. In this episode today, we're going to chat about Brooke's devotional book, Making Room. Make sure you listen for your chance to win a copy of Brooke's book. Welcome, Brooke. Hey, Kim. Thanks for having me. Hey, hey. I'm so glad you could be here. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah, you've had quite an exciting year. You want to share a little bit about what's new in your life? Yeah, well, I have a new baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, her name is Shiloh. She's uh, she's just over three months. Yay. And um, she's so cute. Oh, my goodness. Like <laughs> She's so cute. I look at her <laughs> multiple times a day, and I just say, you're so cute. Oh, uh, yeah, she is. My goodness. Yeah. And how has motherhood been? You know what? It, like, <laughs> okay, I'll, yes, I'm living off coffee and Jesus, yes. one thousand percent. But <laughs> I am, you know, I'm loving it. Honestly, yeah. she's making it so enjoyable. Like, she, she's so sweet. Her demeanor is just so laid back. Yeah, uh, the Lord knew. <laughs> the Lord knew what I needed. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. yeah, and such an exciting year. So you've got baby Shiloh, as well as a new devotional book called Making yes. Room which I'm loving. Aww. Like, let me tell you, I'm not finished it because I am just savoring every Aww. single moment Thank you. and writing all in it. So I encourage everybody to pick it up. Also, for those that are joining us, you have an opportunity to win that. So make sure you listen at the end and I'll give you details for how you can get your hands on a copy of Brooke's book. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah, so I'd love to talk about that. How did this happen? Where did the idea come from to make this devotional? Yeah, okay, so over two and a half years ago now, I felt mm -hmm. the Lord like prompt me by saying like, yeah, you should write a book. And I was like, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I was really insecure about um, like write, my writing. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, truth be told, I was homeschooled um, for a lot of my years as a, as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I always felt like that made me like not as smart as like the other kids, mm. which was like a total lie. Right. But that was a lie that I carried uh, into my adulthood with me. Okay. And so when the Lord told me to write a book, I was like, oh, like oh. I just, I'm not capable of doing that. And you know, the one thing I learned real quick is that when the Lord calls you to do something, he mm -hmm. equips you. Yeah. And so, um, that lie was crushed and Good. I just stepped out and I wrote this book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And I'm so thankful that you listened, right? And as I'm sure there's so many others that are being blessed by your book. Oh, so yeah. now as I know, and I've, I haven't started writing my own, like anything on myself yet. Um, but I've heard that there's lots of editing. Yay. Oh my word. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that so process. Much editing. So much editing. Yeah. <laughs> the editing process was actually really uh, important to me because okay. I really wanted this book to to sound like me. So like yeah. if I was sitting with you just like we are right now mm -hmm. and I was talking to you, I wanted you to hear my voice mm -hmm. in every story and every devotional and every page, every sentence. Yeah. And so I didn't want that taken out of it. And so I worked with the editor. Okay. And so um, what I did, this was like my own, I didn't, I just did this because I wanted to, I wanted this book to be me yeah. is I read this book over about six times out loud with an editor. Okay. And I read it out loud. And I said, if I wouldn't say that word in a sentence or if I wouldn't speak like that to mm -hmm. you, I'm like, we need to change it. We need to take that word out. Oh my and goodness. so, yeah, it took us a lot wow. of, a lot of, a lot of hours, but it was so worth it. And mm -hmm. I feel like when you read this book, like it, it's, 
it's me. It's, it's you. Just like, it does. It does sound like you, which I do love, right? I can just about hear your voice in my head oh, as good. I read it. Good. That was really important <laughs> to me. But yeah, it was a very long process. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> and I'm sure pages, right? Like oh. what you started with to get the book down to this. Pages. Oh, my goodness. Pages. <laughs> pages. And then how do you self-publish, right? You self-published this? I did, yeah. Okay. What's that process like? Yeah, well, I did it through Amazon because okay. of the pandemic. You know, when I was touring, I would have done it through a, a publishing company and gotten copies to bring on tour with me. But because right. um, that's not a thing right now. No. <laughs> and I want, you know, people in Saskatoon and BC and Alberta wanted a copy of my book. I thought, well, how are people ordering things these days? Like yeah. Amazon. Right. And so I put it on Amazon and I self-published it that way. And so it was great. I just, you know, I got myself an editor, got myself a formatter, got myself a designer and yeah. um, put all the pieces together. And it was a lot of learning, let me tell you. Oh, a lot of goodness. trial and error. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I have to redo that part. But, oh. um, but worth it, like so yeah. worth it. How long do you think that took you? Okay, so the whole book in general took me about two years okay. from start to finish, like the whole wow. writing process. But then when the pandemic hit in March of 2020, mm -hmm. yeah, March 2020, um, I all of a sudden, you know, I had canceled <laughs> tours and I had hundreds upon hundreds of free hours. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to finish this. Okay. So I had a lot of finishing to do, but, um, so from March until, and I released it in October. Mm -hmm. So what, how many months is that? March, uh, April, May, yeah, June, July, August, August, September, October, seven months. Seven yeah. Months, yeah. Yeah. So, and that was me like wow. full tilt, like that was my full time job kind yeah. of thing. It was, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So it was, yeah. But yeah, again, it was just, a, it was such a cool, it was such a cool learning experience for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And why a devotional, right? Like what is it that's so important about a devotional? Well, I love to write about um, just different times when the Lord meets me. Mm -hmm. um, he meets me in so many ways, you know, every day in a mm -hmm. different situation, in a different scenario. And, um, yeah, I just think it's important. Like the Lord meets all of us in different ways every day. And yeah. uh, for me, I just wanted to put that in paper and remind people that like, yeah, just remind people of who God is. Mm. And so like there's 80 devotionals of different situations, yeah. whether I be, whether I'm in a different city or province or if I'm on tour or whatever, mm -hmm. there's a story of how God met me. And, you know, some of them like changed my life. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, it was just really important for me to put that into paper and put that into a book. Yeah. And so what do you think for people who are reading it, why is it so important for them to spend time doing a devotional every day? Well, I'm a big believer in you are who you walk with. Mm. You, you know, you spend time with somebody, you kind of, you become like them. You take mm. on their mannerisms, you, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, you know what they say when you're married for so long, you begin to like <laughs> look like your spouse yes. or something. Um <laughs> And that's, that's like our relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Uh, when we spend time with the Lord, you know, we become more like him. Mm -hmm. uh, we are who we, we are. Uh, we're meant to uh, resemble Christ yeah. and take on his characteristics, you know. And so uh, daily devotions are so important just to, you know, the, the more time you spend with the Lord, mm -hmm. the clearer you can hear his voice. Uh, the more you know him. Yeah. So there's, it's very important. Yeah. When I think even in this season too that we're in, right? Oh, yeah. Like who knows where things are going, what is coming. And I think we just need to take some time to create some fertile ground. Yeah. Right? Yes. And so a devotional, right? Do, do you find that most people read a little bit every day? Yeah, right, I think just, so. Yeah. I think I think the way people um, are reading this book is just like one a day sort mm -hmm. of thing. And that's great because at yeah. the end of each devotional, I have a takeaway, like a challenge yes. saying like, hey, are you spending enough time with the Lord? Yeah. Like, what do you need to remove from your life in order to uh, bring more of Jesus in? Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of like, yeah. um, that kind of takeaway. Yeah. And yeah, I think, I think like even in this pandemic, you know, um, I don't know about you, but I, I need daily peace mm -hmm. like there's something that's in the air that like if I don't cling to Jesus and I don't turn to Jesus like I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling yeah. depleted and so just that like daily time with the Lord it's just it's pivotal mm -hmm. yeah and I think spending daily time with God 
and and also using your book as a devotional you've got some great practical tips like you said in those takeaways they are something that is attainable that you can do in your day whether your day is crazy or quiet um, they are such unique and great practical tips that i've really enjoyed thinking and pondering over as the day goes oh thank you yeah yeah thanks um so i just was wondering too for a lot of people that are watching they're volunteers at a church and so um, it's been such a crazy year. I just mm -hmm. wonder if there's some words you can give them to encourage them during the season. Yeah, well, first of all, I want them to know that they're doing a, a great job. Aww. This is like a crazy hard season. Mm -hmm. um, it's really challenging and it feels lonely and it feels draining and it feels, um, yeah, just all of those feels. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, so I just want them to know they're doing an amazing job. Yeah. But also like, if you need refreshing, spend time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need just like renewed strength, spend time with mm -hmm. Jesus. You know, just, uh, and I think that sometimes we put like a pressure on ourselves to think that we need to spend like an hour on our knees praying every yeah. day. And you know, like I would say, start with two minutes. Yeah. Start with one minute. <laughs> if that's all you have right now, that's okay. Yeah. You know, God doesn't like necessarily care about the amount of time that yeah. you spend with him. Although he, he wants you, he wants you to spend time with him, but he's actually looking at like your heart mm -hmm. and he knows your heart and he just, he, that's all he wants. Yeah. So, you know, if you need, yeah, you need that refreshing, you need that renewed strength. You need just like to be reminded of your worth and uh, how much you're loved, spend time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is so good. I always find in talking to you, it's so encouraging. And when you were on our audio podcast last year, right before the pandemic yes. even hit, and I just found it was such an encouraging time and you just are such a breath of fresh air. Oh, thanks. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So thank I just you. want to thank you so much for being here today so oh. we could talk about your devotional and, uh, and I'm really excited to get in the hands of people. So, oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For those joining us, I hope that you're encouraged by Brooke's story. For a chance to win a copy of her book, hop over to the YouTube version of this episode, subscribe to the channel, and give us a like, and comment, making room. Links are available in our show notes. So if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, Remember to subscribe on your podcast app. And for those watching the video edition, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss an episode. Also, hop into the discussion by following us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at 412Canada. Looking forward to next time. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>